hoping that we don't have any sound issues this evening and I'm also sorry that we're a little bit late so I'm just going to grab my iPad here just to um, so I can see what you guys can see it says that we're all live which is awesome get sat down here I'm just going to listen to the sound for a second to see if the sound is better than it was. Yay! I think that's better, isn't it? Excellent. Fabulous. I'm just going to bring the microphone a bit closer. Now I know it's working. I didn't want to bring it too close in case it sounded horrendous. Hello Jess, hi there, um, I can see comments, oh there we go, they've come through now, um, Angie says hello everyone, hope you've rested after Donnie, just about, hi Claire, hi Jess, um, lovely to see you at Donnie as well, um, hi Julianne, how are you, oh awesome, I feel so much better now that we're on and I can see everything, yay, oh Tell me what you think to the sound, guys. Does it sound, it sounds better, doesn't it? Hello, Dawn. Hello to you. So, for tonight's live, a um, couple of things um, that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to show you, actually. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, crafting live at, at Doncaster, actually. Um, and, <laughs> excuse me. Um, Angie says the sounds good, excellent. Jess says it was great to see you both at Donny. So excited! It's it's so lovely. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I just want to show before I start. Um, I just want to show you this card here. This is a card that um, Annalisa made for Ant and I. She sent it along with some um, projects that she's made for the new release. So that's a little hint. And. Um, she sent me this card too and she coloured the little fluffy fuzzy cat um, from the perfect day I think this is or it's kitty capers um, she coloured it to look like little rosy and she just sent us a really nice note um, to say she was thinking of us um, because of Rosie's passing and I just thought that was just absolutely beautiful so I wanted to share that with you because obviously it's not one that she's um, shared on social media I don't think and it's not one that that we've shared um, but I wanted to show you all because I think it's beautiful so um, so yeah so thank you Annalisa I know sometimes you can hop on the lives so if you do happen to hop on um, thank you so much for that I absolutely adore it so and I will treasure that um, so um, I've also got lots of goodies here as well so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Doncaster and Crafting Live because um, we met in person some of our lovely tea timers, who, many of whom are on um, chatting with us already tonight, which is awesome. Um, so, and one of the things about going to um, a, a live event like, like Doncaster is that we do sometimes get to meet um, some of our um, regular tea timers um, and people who join us on the on the crafting live every week um, which we absolutely love because we then get to put a face to a name um, and and it's really great to see you all um, and we also meet lots of new people who will hopefully become friends um, of time for tea um, moving forward so we love doing these kinds of events because it's always nice to see to meet people you know face to face and i love doing the demos <coughs> excuse me um the demos are my favorite thing um about the lives because they're so i don't know it's the freedom that's attached to doing them that i absolutely love so what i take with me i didn't i didn't take it in this container actually and i, I perhaps should have done because i think this would have been easier 
so I transferred them all into this when I came when I came home but I take all of the images that I've already cut cut and colored previously in a little container and I have them all all here um, just in so in some sort of an order not an awful lot of order but I've got all different sentiments that I've already stamped and die cut um, I've got the larger uh, sentiments as well that we'll have die cut um, so that we can use um, and I also have um, a number of I'll just show you I take a few other little die cuts with me because I can't always take um, my, well, I'd never take my large die cut machine because you have to pay for the electric sockets that you use. Um, and we only have, um, we use the one socket that we usually pay for, for the till. So, um, so we don't have any extra sockets. <laughs> so I can't take my big machine, plus there isn't really room for it. So I always take my little dinky machine. So in order to have some different selection of things to make, I always have a little little box of extra little die cuts. Now, in all fairness, these die cuts are probably small enough, most of them apart from these, to go through my smaller die cutting machine. Um, but I do have um, some extra little backgrounds. I also have um, various die cut pieces, maybe our cover plate dies, um, things like that that I can then use to make card samples and just to demonstrate bits while we are there um, for the, the show. So, and the, here's some examples of ones that, I, um, that I've already colored. All of them are blank because what I will spend a fair bit of time doing is demonstrating ink blending techniques. Um, so I've got some some here, some examples of some backgrounds that I did um, while we were there and everyone loved this technique so I did this a few times um, we had some more ink blending there another background that I did here and then again another background with a stencil there so all of the different backgrounds that I was able to just play with and these were ones that I didn't actually make a card from um, but were ones that I just did to demonstrate how the um, how our blender brushes work for people because that's something that people really like to see um, so I've then got all of these to then choose from to be able to demo with and what I love about that, um, I just said loving the organised pieces, it is so much fun because I can just say, right, okay, I've got this background here, which is a little bit wintry. So have I got any winter kind of images that I can use on there? And straight away, that little fox looks so cute on that background. So then it's kind of right, okay, what do I want to pair with that little fox? Um, and I might have got a sentiment in here that works for that but I don't think I have got any Christmassy sentiments at the moment in here um, so then I'm looking for right okay have I got um, any of my smaller dies that I can do a Christmas sentiment with um, or do I um, stamp one um, something like that so I think this is a really nice one to do because then I can take and this is basically the process that I'm going through when I'm demoing live so I might take a frame like this, put that over the top, and I'm thinking the wide frame dies that we've got would work really well with this rather than the heart, because um, this is going to be like a wintry scene. And then just a simple winter sentiment, um, and we've got a really gorgeous card. So I, th I'm, and I might actually do that today. So I'm going to show you the kind of the process that I go through when I'm demoing and putting a card together for a show. Um, when I, and I love, like I say, I love the freedom that I have with that. So I have got a little sentiment here, actually, which is really cool. Um, so warm winter wishes um, is really cool. And I think if I back that onto a bit of white so it stands out a little bit more, that might look really cute. Um, so yeah, a bit of warm winter wishes with our little fox. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty cute. So you can see how quickly then a 
card can come together without a great deal of effort so um so yeah this is and i think if you're crafting at home and you're maybe struggling for a bit of mojo or don't really know quite where to start having some pieces that are already stamped and die cut um you know you can just pick from them and you can mix and match them you know they don't all have to be the same from the same collection um because they're all going to work well together um, because most of our our things do and you see even this little heart here because of the coloring i think that would look really cute on there as well that's so cute i love that so you're just getting to play and i think this is one of the things that i absolutely love about demoing at um at shows is that it's such it's such a freeing experience I noticed a few other guys have joined us as well so i just want to say a quick hello to everyone heather's with us um she says that it was a beautiful card of annalisa's and a lovely gesture um laura ann is with us who else have i missed jane um vicky hello emma's here hi emma um and shani hello shani um thank you for your help um this last week as well that was much appreciated so I'm going to pop this to one side because what I wanted to also show you was some of the oh the little ghost that keeps catching your eye Andy I know the ghost the ghosty is really cute so the ghosty is from let me just grab I, I must have got it here because I'm sure I took it with me so the ghosty is from the um the spooky circle that uh, stamps so there are no dies with this set because you can just use your um nesting circle dies to cut them out which is why um i wanted to do this because it means then that you can buy a nice halloween set quite reasonably priced uh, because you're not having to buy coordinating dies to go with it the other little elements are really quite simple um either to die cut or to just use as background fillers and I've got an example of a card I made using that. So what I thought was I'd just show you some of the cards that I did make um, during the um, during that session. Um, Heather says she, she needs that set. <laughs> it's really cool, isn't it? Um, so this one, so we, we were focusing a little bit on Christmas and winter things because we know that there's a lot of places that are doing kind of winter in Christmas in July and all that kind of thing. We haven't done a Christmas in July set. We will be doing some Christmas sets, but they won't be released until October, um, October time. So, um, so a bit close to the actual Christmas season. But we do have a lot of beautiful Christmas sets already that you could make some really cute cards with. So this was a really fun example of a really simple card um, that I made I just stenciled my background added my little penguins um, and some enamel dots and a simple sentiment really really simple um, I just noticed that Sean has just popped up a question to say when is the next launch the next launch um, is going to be the 29th of this month Sharni so not long to wait lots of work for me to do in the next couple of weeks to get ready for it but yes not long at all so a couple of weeks and there will be a brand new release and it's so cool um i'm i'm actually been playing with um with that today it's a friday 29th of july friday um so um yeah i've been playing with bits of it today and it's awesome i love it so much and i'm sure you will too so the next one that i uh, made was again another christmasy card um, this is using the A5 Cozy Winter stamp set. So the same one that the little Foxy comes from. Um, and I just used some of the mountain dies that we've got. And I'd already got these pre-cut and stuck together. And I've not used them on a project yet, but I thought they worked really well with this snowy background. Um, added the Cozy Winter sentiment and some more enamel dots. And we're done. Easy peasy. 
this one um again is a really really simple one to do so if you're wanting to send this to um you know just to a friend um and you don't necessarily want all the cute characters this is a really fun one to do so again it's using the nordic star um uh, stencil which we have sold out of um which we sold out of after i demonstrated it so many times um so i will uh, we will look to restock that ready for the christmas time um but we used the love intertwine die on there and then the simple sending lots of which i think is from the bold sentiment stamp set and then some more enamel dots just to add that little pop of, of black in there um so i think that's a really simple and pretty card for um for, um, for the wintry season and then for all you Halloween fans out there this is the Halloween card that I demonstrated this was actually the first card that I did um, during the, the weekend and this background I loved how this background turned out um, and I don't know if you guys can see really um, the effect on camera but I ink blended the background using some wilted violet and the villainous potion which I haven't used yet um, and I love how that went together and then I laid over the top of it the um, movie star stencil and I sprayed it with our silver sparkle so you can see it's given this kind of you can see the stars um, shape some of them are not perfect but that doesn't matter um, but they've also got a bit of shimmer to them so it's hard to show on camera but in the light you can really see the shimmer there um, and it worked so well so that's definitely a technique that i'm going to try again because i loved how that turned out um, and then i just used the cap from the spooky circles um, there um, I'd already coloured in the image as you could see in the one with the, the little ghost here I just created a really cool background using my Copic markers coloured in my kitty and then I teamed it up with the scallop circle that comes in um, so this is the die set that comes with the previous um, Halloween set which we don't have in anymore but we do still have the dies now the dies are really cool because there is a little ghost builder in there as well as this scallop circle so it is definitely worth um, getting um, even if you don't have the stamps and then I created the happy Halloween um, as my sentiment again these are two separate dies um, that we have um, and it just works so well together um, I love how that turned out I really do and the enamel dots again just to add a little bit of something extra so that was that so that i mean we've that's four cards done i also did um i believe another um winter card that i gave to a lady um uh, on the day so i don't have that one to show you um this card was um a real eye catcher uh jackie drake hello first time here good evening everyone i love these cards the colors are gorgeous oh thank you so much and welcome to time for tea um i'm just running through the cards that we did at crafting live and then we'll do a quick kind of put together of a card um, at the end so you can see the process um but this one i absolutely love this idea and this is one that you can recreate in so many different ways um, so we've got the outline die here this is the um oh go on now then i can't remember what it's called hang on one second i'm gonna have a little look for it it is the a2 stitched heart so this is the set so it's an a2 size so it's a us size but it comes with this inner frame so you can either do the background as a whole uh, which I think have I got an example of the background done as a whole um, maybe not maybe I used that one yeah I don't think I use I don't think I cut that one out oh yes I did I thought I did so you can have it as a whole piece like so but then you can also cut the center out using this frame die and that gives you this aperture effect which is really cool so I don't think you can see on the screen there if I just show that in a little bit of a different angle 
um, it's got the stitched hearts going all the way around the side I'm not sure if that's picking up I'm trying to angle it a little bit so you can see them um, and then I don't know if you can see it on the, the final piece yeah you can see it just there can't you so um, this was so easy to put together it, this is the Hey Hi Hello um, sentiment set this is one of the cats from the kitties so this cat is from the kitty papers so this little fluffy fuzzy cat there and then we've got um, the sentiment life without you would be a catastrophe the background was one that everybody loved to see demonstrated and I did show this on a previous live um, and it is this kind of tiger stripe so it's the tiger stripe stencil um, that we've got here um, but I've done a um, pink and yellow ombre effect in the background and then gone over that with the orange um, with the tiger stripes and it just makes such a beautiful colour scheme and has inspired obviously my nails as well <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I, I love this colour scheme. I think it's so cool. And the card itself, I absolutely love. Now, I think this you could put a diff any different image in the middle. Sentiment at the top. And I think the, um, the one that I gave away to the lady might have had this similar sort of setup with the sentiment on the top, an image in the middle, and the uh, little sentiment at the bottom. I can't remember quite what it was, what it was but um, really cute. This one's another really fun one. Now, because I don't have any of my layering dies, this was one that I had to um, cut out by hand. But if I was doing this on a live and doing this at home, I would have used my layering dies because then I would have got it the perfect size to fit my A2 card base, which this doesn't. But if you excuse that because of where we were and what we were doing, um, again, it's just a simple ink blended background with the cat and the Sunday image a yum sentiment and a, and a, a sub sentiment at the bottom and then some enamel dots around the outside just to add a pop of colour I love this card I think it's really really bright and fun um, and sweet so um, and it's the Sunday sweetie stamp set is the focal point there and the confetti stencils in the background really easy fun card to make and then finally um, I have this card here now this card um, again I really love how it turned out I love the background so I actually ink blended this directly onto a pink card base so this is an A2 size pink card base but I ink blended over it in shades of red um, so, and then I added the tiled wall stencil over the back this centrepiece is the centerpiece from this frame here so it cuts out with a little stitch line and that's a great little focal point for some of your images so I added um, the little toaster and toast from um, we go together set and then my sentiment is from the hey hi hello die set now if I was doing this again and I wasn't doing this kind of in the moment like we were I probably would have positioned this bit a little bit lower down so that the whole thing was more centralised so it's a little bit higher up than I would have liked it but I still think it's a really cute card and um, I really like how it turned out so um, and I already had these images coloured in so it just worked really well um, together as a piece so what do you think to all of those I mean that was a lot of cards and like I say, I did. So I also made another card. I, I have to say that had the beavers on it. So from the um, beaver, I think the stop beavering around set, um, and I gave that away to a friend who came to visit us on the day, who likes to go for walks in the in the countryside, in the woods, and he really liked the vibe of the card. So we gave I gave that card away. So in total, two, four, six. Eight, nine, I think I made maybe 10 cards on the day uh, over the weekend which is a lot for me um, because you're also talking to people and demonstrating 
um, and then I also did all of these backgrounds as well so yeah it was super super busy super busy <laughs> so but I, I absolutely love doing all of this stuff I really love it so shall we have a go at popping this little winter card because if you are making cards now for Christmas um, then this this could be a really nice card to make um, and it's just to give you a little bit of inspiration uh, I'm not going to obviously I'm not showing you all of the steps but I'm showing you kind of the process that I go through when I'm when I'm at a, an event and I'm thinking that what am I going to make what am I going to do so we have our background already done here now I could now what I could do is potentially do a background start to finish these are some of the other bits that I cut out that I didn't that I haven't used as well so we could we could have done something with those um, this one with the this one really is kind of like a cheese effect but it could also be planets um, you know just changing the color in the background is going to change the design into something completely different um, so I do love that and I just think that this snow flurry one is such a pretty one as well and I did have an idea of maybe putting the snow flurry behind the wind stitched window die and then maybe having some different things in the windows there but I think that looks really cool but I've not decided yet so let's have a go with this because I think this little guy with a little little love heart looks really cute we, we need a frame for him don't we so let me get my what i'm going to go for the wide stitched frames for this one because i love the wide stitched effect so bear with me i'll have a little flickety flick through my um although this one is quite a nice one to do as well because that creates a really nice frame I can't find the little one that I'm looking for. There we are. So these are the uh, wide stitched frames, and these are fab because we're going to get a lovely stitched effect going to frame that that piece of what I am going to use them because I think they're beautiful so let me just turn on my um die cutting machine here and get ourselves a bit of cardstock um no I don't need that one all 300 dss so i'm going to use 250 dsm cardstock because that's my preference um so i think i've mixed up some different cardstock in here but that's it that's a piece <laughs> um that's the only thing is that when you start crafting um in a demo uh, in a demo situation you do literally end up with stuff everywhere, bits of cardstock everywhere, all kinds. So I'm going to try and preserve as much of this um, as we can. So I'm going to cut it down. Let me just pop this on for guidance. Um, because if I pop through um, a, a little bit less cardstock in my machine, it does run through um, a little bit less because it means I can put it right in the center of my plate. So let's line this up and pop this through. And then I need to have a think about what sentiment I want to use because I've got lots of lovely sentiment dyed. Um, so let's have a little look at if we've got any it seems 
sounds kind of strange to me um, to be working on something so cold and wintry on a day that's been, or a week where it's, the weather is quite nice. Um, so I, find, I always find it strange doing um, cards for Christmas um, at this time of year. But, you know, we could, we could be making Christmas cards at any time of year, couldn't we? Because that probably is our most busy time um, when it comes to um, making cards for family and friends. So, so you can see that you've got two pieces that cut out. You've got your frame and then you've got a centerpiece. Um, and the frame itself cuts out all of these little stitched detail. You get a double stitched detail. So that then is going to sit on here and it's going to frame our background beautifully. So, and I can save that for a focal point for another card. So again, in my little stash here, okay, I've got my little box here. And this is a box just to store um, four by six photos. But it's great for storing little things like this that I can then use in a demonstration. So um, let me grab a card base. So I'm just going to use a white card base, I think. So this is an A6 card base. See, yeah, that's going to fit on there perfectly. And this is our background. So I'm going to just line this up. Where do I want it? That there is a good that right. Now, what um, I'm going to do, just for speed, and this again is something that I will probably do while I'm live demonstrating because I don't have all of my equipment with me. Um, so for speed, I'm just going to trim this down with my scissors. I don't have to be neat, so I'm cutting a little bit inside the line there. Because you're not going to see this piece behind. So it, we don't have to worry my lines, my cutting's not super straight. Because once the frame's on top, you can't see it. So let's pop that to one side. And I am going to um, pop this up. So this is going to go, is that the right way up that I wanted to do it? I think it is, or did I want to do it that way up? Yeah, I don't know why, but that feels like that's the right way up. <laughs> so I'm going to use some of my Cosmic Shimmer Glue. Now I can't remember if this is if it bunged up or not. Bunged up. So I'm just going to add some of this glue. nice generous little amount and then pop this onto my card base and just pop that into place so it's not hanging over any edges and smooth that down so again like I say this is kind of the process that I'll be following just building it up gradually. So I'm going to pop my um, my frame on as well. I think we might as well go for that now. Oh, I've got a few little bits of shaker tape already cut here, so this is quite handy. Um, I don't always have, I'm not always this prepared, but seeing as I've got them here, I might as well use them. This is going to give us um, that dimension that we that we need to create that aperture that then our little critter can sit in the middle. So it's a little bit long, so I'm just going to snip off one end. So we took our foam tape with us to the show. That went down an absolute storm. Always does. And I think if you can come and see us at a show... Um, that's the time to pick up your foam tape because um, it does fly off the shelves because obviously you're not having to pay 
for the postage for the larger item. It's one of those that is, unfortunately, for, for, for us and yourselves, it is quite expensive to post. So we tend not to, um, you know, we, you know, we, unfortunately we have to charge for the postage of it. Um, so if you can come to a show, it's much, much cheaper because you're, you're not having to pay that additional cost. So I've not put that on quite straight, so do forgive. I can always trim that off a little bit um, afterwards, but it's not going to affect anything. Um, then we've got our little foxy. He's going to sit in the middle. And now I need to think about a sentiment. So the um, stamp set. So this is a larger than usual stamp set, and it's got lots of lovely wintry images and you can build this snow globe as well um to create um another you know element to your card you get the coordinating dies separately and they do come with the circle dies too to cut out your globe and then at the same time as that release we also released this which um i think is called i think it's the warm winter wishes set I can never remember what these are called. Um, let's have a look. Um, Winter Wishes Wreath. Apologies. Because of the wreath, of course. So this does create this beautiful wreath. Um, but it also comes with some really cool sentiments. So um, we've got the, the Happy Winter Birthday, the Warm Winter Wishes, Hugs and Holiday Cheer. I do quite like the Hugs and Holiday Cheer. And then there's this Sending Winter Hugs um, that just can go over the top of your um, your wreath here and it's on a little bit of a curve now I do think that that is quite sweet so let me have a look at this because that over the top of there does look quite adorable doesn't it um, I think that's Sending winter hooks. And does that come with a that does come with its own die as well. So we often have dies to cut out our sentiments. Um, and this one does have a coordinating die. Interesting. I do like that. Um, it also we also have the large joy as well, which is quite cute. Um, let's have a look at this. I think that might be a little bit too deep. Yeah, I feel like I'm not, yeah, I'm not digging that, but bear with. I think we're going to go with that because I think that looks quite cute. Um, but I also have here my little um, stash of smaller dies in a little folder. Some of these are great for um, for sentiments because of the size of the pockets in the each one here. So we do have the cozy and the joy as sentiment dies, and I'm thinking sending winter hugs with the cozy might look really cute. So let's just. shall we? I might just leave it just with the um, sentiment over the top because I think that looks really quite cute. But um, I also like the idea of having cosy on there. I think that just looks really cute. And it's a really nice little sentiment that. So, um, and I think if you were to do that in I like the idea of doing it in that pop of red that's on his hat. Um, so let's uh, let's have a little play. Let's try stamping out this sentiment first of all. That's going to be the task number one. We've got a bit of cardstock here. I'm going to try freehand stamping it because we're brave. So we're just going to let it fall naturally because if we try and curl it or twist it, it's not going to fit in with our dies. 
So if, I've, if it doesn't fit with our dies, it's because I've manipulated it a little bit too much. So what you might want to do is cut out your die cut first and then stamp over it. A little bit tricky, but it can be done. So lovely. That's, that's pretty good, that, for a first stamp. So this is what I mean, don't manipulate your um, curved stamp too much, just let it fall, just let it fall where it wants to. You can curve your um, your dies, absolutely you can. Uh, your, not your dies, you can't curve your dies because they're metal. But you can curve your uh, stamps more than they are naturally meant to be and you won't hurt them because they will go back into place. But that's why I say don't um, don't interfere with them too much. So I feel like festive berries is perhaps a bit too bright a red. We've got um, a bit of fired brick. That's a bit might be a bit too orangey. Let me see. Or we've got some barn door. Oh, barn door. That looks like the one. Let's try that. So again, this is some of the experiment that I do um, while I am crafting live so um, at a show. So now I'm going to use one of my stackable brushes here. And I've got my red, my red brush. I'm going to use some of this uh, barn door. And I'm just going to add some of this ink. And I love the stackables. For this purpose because they get a really nice intense colour straight onto my paper um, and also in a small area because I don't want to fill this piece of card up I only want a, enough to be able to die cut the word cosy which I think this is going to do going to be enough but then what I thought I might do is grab some of this fired brick which is a little bit darker I think it's a bit darker maybe it's just a bit orangier yeah it's not really much darker I wonder if I put a bit of aged mahogany in there we'll try some of that this is also another thing that I absolutely adore I might use a different colour for this. No, I'm going to use, I use my red actually. Because it's going to just darken it up a little bit. But, oh yeah, that's, that's a lovely colour. That's mixing really well. Just giving it that richer, warmer colour that I was looking for. That's going to match his hat. Um, but this is the thing that I really love, is the little bit of play, playing that you get to do. So just looking back at some of the comments, um, people are saying it's perfect with the release because it's just after payday, which is awesome. So I'm really excited about this release. This is a summery, um, late summer kind of a, um, a theme to it. Lots of fun, um, fun cards, interactive elements to it as well um, so if you like your interactive um, cards then you're gonna you're gonna love this release so I, yeah I'm really excited about sharing this one um, we've got a little bit behind ourselves because we went on holiday um, obviously Rosie passed away um, which really did set us back quite a lot to be honest with you and we've then had a lot to catch up with since we got home um, getting back on track with things we've been doing a bit of decorating um, 
and we've, we've had other things going on, other bits of news that I'm absolutely going to tell you um, very, very soon. Um, so let me just pop it in with my die plates because I've been playing, haven't I? And I've put them all up. There we go. Bear with me one moment. been die cutting images from the new release and I've put my plates in a different different place um, so let's pop this in here and then I can pop both of these two at the same time you see even though this is a smaller smaller um, die cutting The people that we saw at the show, though, um, you know, ones that we'd, we knew and met before, um, there were ones that people that we'd never met before, new fans of, um, of Time T, hopefully new fans. Um, I'm going to build this up, actually, um, and just add a couple more layers to it, see how high. I'll do at least one, I think. I do like a little bit of dimension to my... Um, my sentiments probably get um, I am also very tight with my cardstock as you can see I'm like I can use that I can use that <laughs> um, so my sentiment here the sending joy let's have a look at that because this cut out absolutely perfectly let me get rid of that um so we don't need that and i don't want to lose this little die but you know what this die actually um again i can show in fact shall we do that um let me grab that because this is another this is a really good example of just using your scraps so I can cut that out again out of this piece of cardstock and layer this up. So this is my sentiment and isn't that perfect how that's cut out? I don't know if you can see that from there. Um, but if I layer this up on a couple of pieces of cardstock, I don't need to keep cutting it out of um, cutting out my little bits of foam tape to go on the back. I don't mind doing that because, uh, and I might still do that, but I think a bit of reinforcement with that um, that extra layer of cardstock is just going to work a treat to give us a nice bit of dimension. So I'm going to pop that through there. And I'm also going to cut a little bit of vellum as well. So this is a really nice effect. Okay, let's just going to find a piece of vellum. Perfect. So this is really nice kind of patterned vellum. Um, so not just your no ordinary um, kind of bog standard vellum, if you like. So that's my piece there. I might cut another piece of that, I don't know. And then I've got another cosy cut out um, there. So again, I might cut another one of those, I don't know yet. They're going to lay it together. Isn't that a beautiful little script piece there? And then we're going to layer this onto our vellum here. So I'm going to grab my vellum. And again, these are really nice size sentiment that you can just use your little scraps of, which I love that. Um, we can just use our scraps here. So again, we can poke out the little, the little spare bit keep that to one side because we might layer that up again and let's cut out our vellum and see what this looks like once we've just layered two pieces together of each and see what we think because this is um, this is going to look really really cute when it's done I think um, oh I love that so we've actually got two different types of background for this die which I forgot um, so this cuts really a, quite a tight cut around cozy 
you've also then got the wider cut here which cuts around both so you can layer that up three times which I think is really really awesome um, but I think I'm just going to stick with this because it's quite delicate and it's going to look really pretty Ooh, on the bottom of our card so let's just have a look here at what our layout's going to be so we've got cosy there at the bottom I feel like maybe my vellum might be a bit lost but we'll see and then we've got our little guy sat in the middle there very cute and then we've got the sending winter bullet so he can come up a little bit more can't he that's it and then we've got the cosy oh that's really cute so cute I do love that and I really think that this looks really nice but I, I have got a hankering to do that um, white heat embossed onto red what do you think Shani says where um, is my little die cutting machine from it well we sell the die cutting machines they are um, on our website they are 34.95 I believe um, from memory um, and they are the perfect little portable die cutting machine I feel like I keep picking this one up and I know that it's off <laughs> this is the last one I can see um, so yeah they are really really cool Shani um, so yeah please do check those out on the website um, I think they're a really good price for a small die cutting machine really simple just the two sets of um, dies required, uh, plates required, um, really robust, cute little machine. We sell them in pink and in white as well. I don't think we've got many of them left actually. So, right, so I'm thinking, I think that those two layers do work really nicely. And then I'm also going to pop those up. But I feel like this does need a bit of colour doesn't it so let me just grab have I got some red cardstock that is similar shade to what we've used I think that is pretty bang on so we're going to use this little bit we're going to do a little bit of an experiment See, and this is where one idea leads to a million other ideas and I love that so you start off with one thing and it you know it kind of progresses so um, and that's what crafting's about isn't it so we need to add a bit of um, anti-static powder onto there now the reason that I'm not doing this um, with uh, ink blended card is that the distress oxides take such a long time to dry that um, you wouldn't be, your all of your even if you used an anti-static um, we wouldn't get a good impression um, with our um, once we put our powder on top because like I say it would stick because the distress oxide ink is so, so wet it will stick to that um, distress oxide too much and so we'll then end up with just um, an, an illegible sentiment struggled to get the words out there I do apologize I hope that made sense but you can see because we've used the cardstock rather than ink blended background that that's given us a perfect um, impression and we haven't got bits of white stuck elsewhere onto our cardstock so um, I think that's the that's the only downside with the distress oxide inks if you're wanting to do um, a white heat embossed or a heat embossed impression on top you the you can do it and the way to do it is to let it dry overnight um 
so that it fully dries and and hit it with the heat gun and then hit it with the antistatic and then give it a go and don't be surprised if it's still not perfect it is it is tricky it is tricky right let me um grab my heat tool and I'll just give this a little warm through and I think this is going to look really cool So I'm going to heat it from underneath and this is going to take no time at all to set. Just a little bit on the S there, make sure that that's all done. Perfect. So um, Dawn says, love the Cindy Winter Hug Stamp, great for winter birthdays really really good and the um the dye machine um shani yes it really is excellent for sentiments because and for your smaller coordinating dies because if you're anything like me and you've got a giant machine it can be it can that can be tricky because you can um they can get dislodged in the machine so you can see there that even though we use the antistatic, there are still some tiny little bits of the white. But when we pop our dye over the top, most of those are going to be cut off. So I'm not worried about that at all. So again, like I said, if I was to put this through my larger die cutting machine, I'd be pretty scared that this was going to get lost and shift around whereas using my little die cutting machine this is I've got much more control over it now don't get me wrong I could still do this wrong and because I've said all of that I probably will do now but, but it, you've got less chance Jackie says we'll have to go now thank you for making me feel welcome I will watch the rest in the morning and keep an eye out for the next live session we're here every week, Jackie, with sometimes, I mean, obviously life can get in the way. Um, so, but for the most part, we're here every week um, doing a live, either on a Tuesday or a Thursday. So we'll see you again soon. Um, okay, let me, and I'm so pleased that you could join us. Right, let's um, reveal this and see if, if I've made a good job. What do you think? Look how perfect that's turned out. Can you see that? Isn't that awesome? So, these are not wasted though because the dyes obviously match. So now I've got three layers that I can add behind there. Now, if you're worried about seeing the white, you can do them all in red, but I, I'm not concerned. I think that that now in the red, the little pop of red our little cosy sentiment I think that looks awesome love it so let's stick all the bits together so I need to stick my little sentiments together so put them there so I don't lose them using my cosmic shimmer glue because this is my fave um, and I've dispensed it into these little pots Again, because it's just so much easier to do fine detail. So I love the little the needle applicator. There we go. One more one. Let's do this. I do really enjoy the um sentiment uh, dies coordinating dies I just think it's so perfect um, to have them um, because you know trying to find a way of die cutting this um, especially when it's on a curve um, you know I just think you would never find it and it just wouldn't look as perfect as this does now we've done it this way so 
for the cosy I am going to pop this onto the vellum and then I'm going to pop it up onto um, some foam as well so the liquid glue just gives me that little bit of wiggle room that I enjoy so let me um, get my little bits of pre-cut foam tape because this is handy now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut some little bits of this on here and place them roughly where the um, the die cut so can you see you can see the die cut through the vellum now I'm not cutting these that small so you know you, they're not going to fit exactly behind um, those die cut pieces but for the most part they're not gonna, you're not going to see them because of the die cut so that's the theory behind it is if I position them carefully I can still get the support that I need without them being totally visible. I just think I'm, and without me having to cut them into the tiniest pieces imaginable. So I'm just going to pop that one there. Oh, stuck to my nail. There we go. <laughs> Shall we add this final piece? Might as well, haven't I? Tiny piece. So we'll just add a little bit of that one there. That one. I think that should be it should give it enough support. So let's just take these little bits off the back. So I'm positioning these bits first the top and the bottom so that I know where my little pot needs to sit because if I don't I might put my pots too high up or too low down and then there not be enough room for my sentiments so I'm thinking um, ahead to allowing myself enough room to make it look um, in proportion so I can use my little fox as a guide but I've not stuck him down yet and then the cosy is just going to sit just there. So now we, we can position him at the right place. So I'm going to use some of this same foam tape because we've got a bit of it already cut and everything then will be at the same height, um, which again is a plus. I'll just put a little bit of this down. Oh. Does like to fly off everywhere. Oh, has it got a bit too stuck? There we go. And and I'm also going to add some to the back of the little part um, in the speech bubble. Now you're going to ask me where that speech bubble came from, and I'm going to say I can't quite remember the top of my head um oh which one might it have come from does it come from any of these no no speech bubble there i feel like it might be like the happy mail or something like that so that's gonna go there i think i might need to just move them over ever so slightly oh have i stuck them down a bit too much take up some of my background at this point so it should be okay just have to move them up move them up ever so slightly yeah that's that's it there we go and then a little bit of this one over here there and there we go I think that's pretty much done 
Heather says, I'm off to send you an order as soon as you finish, lol. Oh, Heather, that's so cool. Thank you. Um, now, we could, we could add some enamel dots. I don't have any red enamel dots, unfortunately. Um, but we do have white and we do have this, um, this aqua colour, which goes really nicely. Um, the closest thing to red is kind of this orangey colour, um, which is almost there, but not quite. White, but we do have the white um, which does look quite cute so let me just use my um, pokey tool here and see if we can get this I know we have it let's see if we can get it over there let's see if we can get another one open up a set here so we've not got another one open I don't think probably have somewhere I've got these open all over the shop <laughs> um, so let's have a look at this one so they come in three different sizes which is great um, because then you can vary the, the look I feel like that might be Move that one a bit further down. Oh, that's wadgy. <laughs> oh, that looks so pretty. I really like that. And you could always add a couple more of these enamel dots because I'm, I'm a sucker for an enamel dot, I have to say. So I've got one there, and I like to work in odd numbers. So we're going to go with five. Is our little card complete? Isn't he gorgeous? So there you go. That is basically how I would put together a card if I was demonstrating at an event. It didn't take us that long. It only took me longer because I did some heat um, embossing here, which I wouldn't do if we were at a live event. So if we'd been at a live event, I would have just used the stamped image and popped that on there. So that would have been much quicker. Um, so, yeah, I think that's just turned out really, really cute. So we've got another Christmassy, wintry card um, for a winter occasion. So I'm just going to pop all my enamel dots back out of the way. Um, I love my enamel dots, by the way. If you haven't got these, do have a look for them on the website because you'll be adding them to everything the cat the dog everything <laughs> um right okay let's tidy up everyone so here we go these now are all of the cards that um i've been able to make using that same kind of principle of crafting with what I've got in my stash um, and I love this for inspiration you know for just grabbing some some bits and mashing them together with other elements in your stash so your frame guys for example grab those they're great for this kind of technique ink blend in the background pop in your images on a couple of sentiments and boom you're good to go I think this is a great way of making a quick card and just really igniting your um, your creativity and, and having some fun with it, not overthinking it, um, which I know we all do, we really overthink things and I, I want to say don't do that. Um, one last thing that I am going to do, which I didn't do and I love doing and I did that on this card, um, if you look here, is I have added some highlights to my sentiment with um, white jelly roll and I'm going to do that on this because I do think that that just does finish off your centerpiece just makes it pop and I just do it wherever I feel the fancy is taking me 
because it is purely decorative. It's not meant to be real highlights. I'm going to hold this up to the camera and hopefully you can see those highlights because sometimes it's it's hard to, to capture those um, and it, for it to focus. But I'm, I'm thinking that that might have got that quite a bit. I think that just finishes it off. Um, so there you go. All done. I'm off to go and watch Love Island now. Um, and look out for um, a post tomorrow with uh, a little bit of an update on Time for Tea Life. What's going on behind the scenes at Time for Tea. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you so much to everyone who came to see us at Crafting Live. Thank you all of you for your support and your orders and all of your well wishes, um, you know, um, after Rosie's passed away and Clyde as well. Um, it's meant the world to us. So thank you so much. And I shall see you all next week for another Crafty Live. See you soon, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. You're very welcome, Dawn. See you soon. Bye.